Good morning, I'm Cody Hendrickson. Today we're going to take a look at how to get ready for the AP Computer Science A FRQ section. So, first thing we want to do when we're preparing for the FRQ, we've got a couple things we want to go over before we get started. We want to talk about timing, practice, the ideas for each problem, generic tips for the exam as a whole, what to do before the exam, how the exam itself is graded, and then a quick overview of each of the four questions that are on the exam itself. So timing. The timing itself for the FRQ is only 90 minutes long, which means it's got 22 and a half minutes per question. Uh, keeping track of that while you're taking the test? Yeah, I don't think so. So basic idea, you want to pace yourself down to 20 minutes per question. So that gives you about 10 minutes at the end to review all of your answers. It's also very easy to keep track of on the uh, clock on the wall so you can easily see that and identify when to take breaks to work on what you need to. Next thing, Q1 is design. Design to be the very easiest one. So start here, get the quick one done, move on. If you don't want to solve an entire question, solve what parts you can and then move to the next one so you can come back and work on it again later when you have more time. Again, by pacing yourself, you can come back and work it again as you go along. Practice. Now, this should be done all the way um, before today as well, but you want to make sure you use the released exams in AP Central to keep practicing. You can also log on to your MyAP account and do all the stuff that your teacher has set up on MyAP to help you practice for the exam as a whole. Great resource. CodingBet also has some free practice questions you can use to help get ready for the exam. You practice writing code on there. And of course, you're um, writing that on a computer, but you want to get practice writing it on paper too. And then finally, uh, the three review textbooks I can recommend. The authors have done an amazing job. They're great human beings. They really help you practice for the exam. Barron's Five Steps to a Five and Skylight. These are all great resources you can use. They have some great tools out there to help get ready for the actual exam as a whole. Now, each problem, you want to make sure you read every single thing on that page. No, not quite. You want to make sure you read the pre and post conditions that the comments on each method you're working with. So it tells you what is true before it goes in and what's true after that method occurs. So you know what's happening as you write those actual go that goes along with it. You first thing you want to do is you identify what you need to do and what is useful. One of the things I recommend is you actually write on the actual paper itself. So you're like, oh, here's what I need to do. I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. Using an underline or a circle to go over those things you have to do. You want to make sure you start on the answer document with the appropriate header. So rewrite the header for that method it's telling you to write. Write that on that answer document so you make sure, oh, here's exactly what I need to do and make sure it matches up what's on the actual question itself. Put your curly brackets in. It helps you organize your code visually and it keeps your brain on track. It's a great thing to do. Now, if the method you're working with has a return type, make sure you declare and initialize a variable of that type at the top of the method and down at the bottom of the method, return that variable that you created and initialized on the appropriate value at the very top. And that takes care of the beginning part of the question right away. Okay, great thing to do. Great way to start. Like I was saying, you want to make sure you mark up that test document. As you can see right here, I've underlined the things that are important, that are really critical actually doing the question. And then it tells me in underlining blue, like, oh, here's the things that tell me what would be inside that tokens array, including how to work with that. And so I then I need to return an array list that has all the open and closed delimiters in tokens in original order. And so we can see the results of that. I put little check boxes on there. So I can say, oh, here's a checkbox for this. Here's a checkbox for this. And what it returns back is the result of that call to the um, get delimiter list passing it tokens. So you can see exactly what happens. So you identify the relationship of the code that's given to you and the sample itself. And notice again, when we're talking about the sample, it's just a sample. It's not the actual code you want to code to. So keep that in mind. For generic tips, identify what you need to do for the question. Read the actual instructions and see what you need to do for that. Writing slow is also really helpful. It makes it so you can easily uh, read it again. That goes to the next one, which is print is better than cursive. You may have amazing cursive handwriting. Make sure it's very legible. This stuff is going to get scanned into a computer and put up on someone's screen somewhere else. And so make sure you write things that are being very legible for other humans to read. Leads to the next one as well. Big letters are always better than tiny letters. Again, resolution is a big thing, so you want to make sure you can easily read this when we're working with this. Some people don't have the best eyes. Unless you're explicitly told to in the question. Do not, do not write system.println or appropriate statements or <clears throat> do not write system.println or associated statements or any other just random code. Only answer what it tells you to do because if you write code that doesn't work that causes problems, you're going to lose a point. And so unless you're explicitly told to in the question, there's been one question out of like last five years that's had that, don't do it. Only write what you need to do for that. Answer only what is asked. Now, when we're talking about actually writing the full free response question, the average length of a solution is 18 lines for the entire part A, B, or A, B, C, which means it's between five to nine lines per part, which means these methods you're writing, these constructors and these classes you're putting together are not huge things. They're just little tiny chunks. So don't worry about doing this huge, big, blown out problem. It's just little tiny chunks that write a specific part of the question you need to solve. So keep that in mind as you go through this. The next one is really, really critical thing. Make sure you use the parameters and methods that are given to you. If the method you are writing has a parameter inside the parens that you have to actually write, I guarantee, yes, I guarantee that you need to use that parameter as part of your actual solution. 
If there's a method that says like, oh, you'll need to use this method to get full points in the thing, make sure you use that method because it's given to you for a reason. Use that reference sheet that, and that information that goes along with it. Now, the quick reference sheet is also given to you at the very beginning of that exam. You want to make sure you use that as you go through and take the actual test. It looks like this. And as you can see, it says, oh, there's a string, string for a constructor object. They have dot length, dot substring, dot index of dot equals. These are methods that exist on string and you can use them to help solve your problems. It's a great resource you use throughout the entire exam. Use it for your best advantage. Before the exam, so this is talking about tonight specifically, we're getting ready to watch this before you take the exam tomorrow. Make sure you sleep. Sleep does amazing things for your brain. It really helps you be able to do better. Make sure you also eat food in the morning. Now I'm not talking about a huge uh, mega meal or something just a little tiny. Get a nice little food, put your tummy so it's nice and happy so when you go to the exam, you're not gonna worry about having your stomach just go wow the entire time. Try and get a little bit of exercise before you do. It increases the blood flow of your brain, makes your brain more alert and active, and it can do some amazing things for helping you process stuff as you go through this. Before the exam, use the bathroom. It relieves stress in amazing ways. So try and do that right before. It helps you do a better job on the exam as a whole. And finally, breathe. Take your time. Try not to stress too much as you do this and take a nice slow breath as you go through the exam because you'll do a better job as you do so. The FRQ grading. So when we actually get the exams back later on in the year, we're going to grade these. And each of these exams are graded with a nine-point rubric per question. Each rubric point is either yes or a no. You either get it or you don't. There's no in-between on this. Rubric points are also directly tied to specific areas of the course and exam description, the CED. That's the document that we use to actually structure the uh, course itself. And each point tests a specific group or set of group um, points that you need to know as part of writing that. And so if you lose one single point in the rubric, it doesn't mean you lose all the other points. No, you lose, the one, you lose that one thing. We then move on to the next part of the actual grade and grade that part of the problem accordingly. So we try make sure you can do this. If you miss one thing, it's okay. We'll move on. We'll keep grading the stuff as we go through. And so by keeping that in mind, you can make sure you can do the best job possible because each thing is graded on its own and not directly linked to every other point inside the entire question. So just do one thing. If you keep going, you'll be able to do better points. Overview for the questions. So we've got four questions again. The first question is the method control structures. Again, it's the easiest. Keep that in mind. Start here. Second question is the class question. Third question is the linear data structures for array and array list. And finally, the fourth question is the 2D array question. So the first screenshot we have right here is straight out of the CED, taking about what actually has to go along with the actual question. So you're going to write in some code that will create objects of a class and call methods, and writing program code that will satisfy method specs using expressions, conditional statements, and iterative statements. So what does that mean? Well, you're going to make objects with variables. And you're going to assign that, that object you create to a variable by calling a new in the constructor, and assign that to a variable. Then you're going to use those objects to call other methods that exist inside that. You will use parameters and or data members to do more with that code. You will be using either if, else if, or else logic to help determine which methods to call or actions to perform. You might be using loops to perform actions more than once. You might use the math methods like dot abs, dot um, square root, etc. to actually calculate something with that. You might use the string methods like say for example dot substring or index of to calculate where inside a string something is. You'll write methods that can do stuff with objects and calculate information. Q2 is the class question. This is the design idea. As you're going to write program code to divide a new type by creating a class. You're going to write program code to satisfy method specs using expressions, conditionals, and iterative statements. So you might be using logic in there as well. So you're going to make a class and all specified data members and any methods it requires you to make for that. Remember, if you have data members that belong to that class, that those fields, data members, or instance fields, they need to be initialized inside the constructor. That's its job, so make sure you do that. You will need to implement all specified methods. It will give you a, uh, methods you need to do. Make sure you uh, look at the list of the uh, documentation to go over that and write those methods for it. Those methods may require arithmetic, math methods, string methods, loops, and or logic to go along with that as well. But again, the big focus of this is making a class that can do those things. So make sure you uh, identify the class you need to make, the data members that it needs, and the methods that need to be a part of it. It'll give you all the information you need right there inside the structure. So make sure you look at that and use those instructions to go from there. The third question is linear data structures. Again, you're working with uh, conditionals, expressions, and native statements, and working with the traversing, uh, creating, and manipulating ideas inside a one-dimensional array or an array list of objects. So you're going to work on creating an array or creating an array list. You have to loop over the array list using like a for or for each loop or maybe even a while loop. You have to extract values out of that array or array list, and if you're going to be putting things in, and make sure you remember you can't put things in using a for each loop. You can only extract out. Um, you want to make sure you know how to use the logic and math to go over that. This is a great way to review some of the stuff you've been working and, um, in your code to go from that and go from there. Finally, the last question is the 2D array question. Same basic approach we did with 1D arrays on Q3, but now it's working with a 2D arrays. Remember that in Java, a 2D array is really just an array of arrays, so each row inside that 2D array is another array, so keep that in mind. When we're talking about array name length, that's how I get the number of rows. Array name sub zero dot length gives me number of columns, and a 2D array in Java land for AP Computer Science A is always a rectangular array. That might be square, but it's always rectangular. And the best way to traverse a 2D array is using nested for loops for traversal. 
Those are the things you want to do to make sure you practice for the exam. I hope this is a great real review so you can get ready for the exam itself. Have a great day. If you want to watch more videos on how to go through this, there's some wonderful resources out there. Have a great day. Do well tomorrow on the exam, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.